So I'm going to um, perform some quick demo of our MPC protocol that is based on garbling. And here <clears throat> I will show you one, uh, one of the MPC nodes. This is the screen I'm on. Then uh, I'll show you how a client can request some um, operations from the MPC protocols. And here I'll show you some interesting files. Uh, during the execution. So let's begin. Here I'm in the MPC node. Here I will not uh, do any anything. We'll only see some of the operations that it uh, performs during our uh, executions of commands and uh, other, other commands by the clients. So here is the client. Um, here we'll, we'll write our commands. So it already waits for our commands. Now let's see what commands we want to uh, we want to send to the MPC. So the first command will be to generate a key for Alice. So the MPC will store uh, private information for different users. So the first thing a user has to do is to onboard to the system, and the first thing in in order to onboard is to generate a key and to secret share it to the MPC nodes. So this is exactly what we are going to do now. The command is gonna be keygen, uh, Alice and generated keys A. This is the name, this is the name of um, the file in which secret shares of Alice's key will be shared in, okay? So let's run this, okay? It tells me um, that it executes my command generated successfully and the file was generated and here let's see what did the um, MPC node did he received um, he received that command and executed it keygen okay now we can go and see here and we'll see that we have uh, the new file called generated key a we can open it. Generated key A. Generated keys A. And this is the key generated uh, for Alice. And it is stored in a secret sharing format by the MPC parties. Okay, let's go back. Maybe we want to generate other keys. So let's uh, let's generate another key for Bob, for example. Let's do this. Oh, there is some error I, uh, error I got. So let's write it uh, manually. So key gen for Bob. And let's call this file now generated keys b dot. Okay, key is generated. Let's see here. Yes, key gen. And now I can also print that key. You can see it's diff it's different key. And let's continue. So now um, what I want to do, I have some inputs for Alice and for Bob. So this is already prepared. So let's see what inputs those parties have. So here you can see a file named clear inputs Alice. Let's see what it has. You can see that it has two inputs. The first input is named the variable named A. It, it is a 16 bit variable. Then the value of this variable is six and Alice is the owner, right? It, it is in the uh, inputs, clear inputs that uh, Alice has. And another variable named O, it, it is a 32 bits uh, variable and stores the value 10. We can also see what Bob has, clear inputs Bob. Let's print it. And Bob has only one input named B, it's 16 bit input and the value is three. Now, what we want to do 
is to encrypt those inputs. So we'll go to the client and send this command, encrypt using generated keys. A, this is the key for Alice. Encrypt the, the inputs in the uh, file that we already opened before, I showed you before. And store it in a new file called encrypted inputs. Okay, so let's run this. And it is, we can see here now, we have a new file, encrypted inputs. And now we have um, Cypher and Random, those uh, consist, those two values um, actually form the Cypher text. So instead of having the actual value, as we've seen before, let's see, six and 10, we have here the Cypher text, which is uh, formed by these two values, Cypher and Random, also here. Okay, then what we are going to do is to, uh, we want to do the same for Bob. We want to encrypt the values of Bob. Let's do the same command for Bob. No, let's write it manually. Encrypt generated keys B. Clear inputs. Bob, let's make sure this is the name of the file. Clear inputs, Bob, yes. Clear inputs, Bob, and we'll encrypt it. We'll add it to the file called encrypted inputs. Okay, now let's see that it the new input of Bob was added. And yes, we see that the owner of this input is Bob. Now this is the file encrypted inputs that when we'll run an MPC program, when we'll run a program on these encryptions, uh, it will take all values of the variables from, from this file and uh, it will work on encrypted values rather than the actual plain text values. So what is the command? First, let's see the program that will, that will run um, over ciphertext. So the program is also um, represented by a file here. It's called opcodelist.txt. Let's see what it has. And here you can see that the program takes uh, the input variable a that it was it is it belongs to Alice and it onboards it to the system. Now it is represented um, in a, in an encrypted format that um, suitable that is suitable for operation by the MPC. It does the same for B, which is also owned by um, actually B is owned by by Bob, as you can see here. Then we, we do some operations on variables. So here C equals the addition of A and B, but the A and B we refer to the plain text version. So it does not just add ciphertext, it, do it does add the secret values behind those ciphertexts and so on and so on. We do a lot of operations. We can do any, any kind of operation. Um, our inspiration of this opcode list that we support is uh, from the uh, EVM actually, so we want to support all operations that are uh, that are actually supported by the, the EVM in order to extend it uh, in the most natural way later. Um, you can see here on this line that we also onboard the other variable by Al by Alice named O. Here a cast um, sorry here we want to decrypt the value. After we computed some intermediate value called cast, we want to decrypt it. So after we do the execution of this program, cast will be just presented in the output in the plane. Okay. Then we do some other operations like add. Uh, we do some comparison. This is equal, then greater than, not. And then we do also another decrypt for a variable named not. Then um, mux is like uh, an if statement. So if this variable is zero, it will take this value k. 
otherwise if it's one it will take this value m so this is the value that greater takes okay then um, we do some other operations like equal non non equal um, and other decrypts values then uh, set public means that we want to encrypt the value two into a variable a 16 bit variable so this is what it does and now amount is a variable that uh, is just um, an encryption of the value two then we have two variables a and b those two var uh, variables represent amounts and uh, like the these two variables represent balances, let's say balances of Alice and Bob. And let's say we want to do some operation called transfer. We want to transfer this amount. We already know this amount is two. We want to transfer the value two from the balance of A to the balance of B. The result, this, this operation gives us back three variables, X, Y, and res, uh, res for result. X is gonna be the new balance of uh, a, Y is the new balance of B, and result is just a flag that tells us whether the operation uh, was actually performed or not. Why uh, would the operation would not be performed? The reason is that if the amount that we ask to transfer um, is less than the balance that A has, then this transfer operation will fail. And therefore, X and y will remain the same as a and b, and the result will be a flag that um, refers to a failure. Okay, then um, we decrypt amount. Actually, we know what it is, so it doesn't tell us anything new. Um, then we offboard um, some variables to Alice and Bob. What does it mean to offboard? It means that we take the secret value in the value in, in the variable m and re-encrypt it to Alice. So only Alice will be able to see it later when we open the outputs of this program. We do the same for x to Alice and y to Bob. So x is gonna be the new balance of Alice and y is gonna be the new balance of Bob. And finally, we also decrypt the result of this transfer operation so that both Alice and Bob would be, would be able to see whether the transfer operation succeeded or not. Okay, so this is the entire program. Now let's see um, how to run it. We'll go to the client and we'll write, um, write the following. We'll first send the program to the parties, to all parties. So this is just the preparation step, program, opcode list. The opcode list is what we've seen before. And encrypted inputs is the file they should have in their uh, file system. It has the encryptions of all inputs. Okay, so let's run it. Good. Let's see if we have any indication here. Yes, you got the command program. Then we'll send the execute command with exactly the same arguments. Okay, let's run it. Now we'll run it and immediately move to the um, MPC node to see all the operation. Okay, so let's um, go over it quickly. We can see that it performs the opcodes one by one. So perform onboard, it takes uh, the value, the encrypted value of Alice and onboard it to the system. It do, does the same for Bob. Then add, it takes two ciphertext and adds them to result a new ciphertext, okay? Then another, uh, all the operations are, are here. And finally, uh, remember the transfer operation that we did here, and then we do the decryption and offboarding, okay? So this, um, this is the entire execution using MPC of um, the opcode list, which, is, which represent which, which represents a program. Cool. Okay. Now we want to uh, we want to emulate, let's say, Alice, and we want to um, to retrieve the program output. Now the program outputs contains all the values that were decrypted, no matter whether it was decrypted for Alice or for Bob or for everyone. 
Okay, so let's retrieve it. And um, in fact, we can we can already see the program outputs in that file. Okay, let's see what is this file. So program output. Let's open it. Program output here. And here you can see all the outputs from the program. So we remember the variable cast. So this is a 16-bit um, variable and the value is also 16. We have the variable not, which is zero, true, one, then, and so on. And finally, we have some variables that are only, that can only be seen by a specific party. So we have the variable M that can all, only be seen by party Alice. And also X can only be seen by party Alice. And Y can be seen by the by Bob. And remember the result variable that tells us whether the operation succeeded or not. So here it's one, it means that transfer succeeded. And the new balance of Alice and Bob is stored in uh, variables X and Y. Now, if you want to actually see what are X and Y, we'll run another uh, program, another command at the user. The, the command is called decrypt. So this is decryption by Alice. Okay, it takes the key that Alice generated in the beginning. Uh, it takes the program output file that it, we've seen uh, just before. And then it asks to uh, write the decrypt decrypted values belongs to Alice to this file, decrypted output A. Okay, so let's run this. It's going to be decrypt. Then generated key. A. This is the key of Alice. Then we take the program outputs. Then we will, we ask to write them into the decrypted output A. So let's do this. Yes, now it succeeded. And we are going to go there to the file system and see. Okay, now we can see that there is a file called decrypted output A. We're gonna look into it. Yes. Now we can see that Alice can actually see the variable M and X that we've seen before. Here, M and X were encrypted. And here, because Alice used her uh, key, she could decrypt it and get the new balance, which is x. x equals 4. This is the new balance of, it, of, of Alice. Um, and now I just want to, to mention this is the first time that um, an MPC is actually um, emulates the EVM commands. And um, this is the first time that um, an MPC can actually emulate all the opcodes that um, the Ethereum EVM offers. So this is going to be integrated into our um, chain that is based on EVM. And then you, you'll be able you'll be able to um, actually onboard secrets to the system and do operations on secrets. Um, and that's it. Thank you.